All right, so the diagram is a circle that is PQRST is a circle and it has center O and PS is a diameter and the lines RS and QT are parallel. So, um, and that is why we see an arrow on each of these, you know, line and the length QR is equal to the length RS. So you have QR equal to RS and that is why we see, you know, a mark on each of these two lines. So this means the two lines are equal so you see this and that it means the two lines have the same magnitude all right and also we are told that the angle qts is the angle qts is 52 degrees that is qts is 52 degrees so how can we find the angle SQT. So that is the first question. It says that we have to find the angle SQT. So we have to find this angle. Now in mathematics, if you are asked to solve anything on a circle theorem, what you have to do or what you have to ask yourself first is what are you to find and what do you know? So you know what we have to find is this angle that is SQT and what we know is this angle. So how can this um, angle help us to find this angle? Well, how can I know this angle? First, um, the angle here and the angle that is here should be equal because one of the theorems of circle or circle theorems says that the angles obtained by the same chord in a segment or in the same segment on the circumference are equal. So if I can tell the angle here, then I can know the angle here. That is one thing that I have to know. All right, the next thing that I can also say here is that from the diagram, I've been given the diameter, I've been given the center. Of course, PS is the diameter. You know, the diameter is a, is a chord, of course. So, I mean, it's a chord that passes through the center of the circle. Now, one of the circle theorems also says that the angle subtended or formed by the diameter on the circumference is always 90 so the whole of this is 90 and the whole of this also is 90 so an idea that i have here is that the angle that i am to find that is the sqt should be less than 90 if the whole of here is 90 degrees i don't know the angle but i know that it has to be 90. now let me also go to the triangle qrs why have i been given you know the triangle qrs the triangle qrs is an isosceles triangle because the length here qr and rs are equal so that means that the angles here must also be equal so if here is say x then here has to be x all right so these are the things that i have been given and the last thing here is of course these two arrows that i see here so first i have talked about this angle i've also talked about the fact that I have you know a diameter so I have made use of this um, angle and I'm saying that you know the angle here by circle theorem the angle here and the angle you know here has to be equal uh, because you know this angle or 52 is formed by the chord QS and that same chord forms an angle here so the angle subtended or formed by the same chord in the same segment on the circumference of the circle are equal. So that is that. But, I mean, it gets more interesting if I look at these two arrows. I'm being told that these two lines, the line RS and the line QT are parallel. So, you know, for a line, you can extend a line to any um, point. And the moment you draw parallel lines, you have to look at what we call the transverse line or the transversal. Now, if you look at this line, the line QS is a transverse line. It passes through the two parallel lines. And when you do that, you see that the angle here X, the angle here, I can, you know, draw a Z here. So the angle here and the angle here are equal because these two angles here alternate so if here is s here too is s all right so i think um one of the easiest way that i can solve this is that i'll try to find this angle and if i can know this angle then i can know these two angles here because they are equal 
and the angle here should also be equal to the angle here because angle RSQ alternates with angle um, SQT. All right, so the 52 also is formed by the same chord QR, sorry, QS, that forms the angle at R. So look here, I was given the angle 52. So the first thing that I did was I asked myself, which chord forms the angle 52? Of course, when you're dealing with circle theorems, you either talk about chords or acts. But I normally want to talk about chords. So which chord forms angle 52? So let me see. It is the chord QS. And that same chord, what does it do? It forms another angle here. That makes it equal. But it also forms another angle in the opposite segment. So the angles formed by the same chord um, in opposite segments on the circumference of a circle add up to 180. So if here is what um, uh, 52, then let me put Y here. So this means the angle Y, that is the word angle at R, that is angle QRS plus the angle here, that is SQT angle S, oh sorry, angle STQ, rather. Is 180. So QRS is the Y and STQ is 52 here equals 180. So angle Y equals 180 minus 52. So Y equals 128. So the whole of this angle is 128. All right, if I know this angle. Then I can also talk about the sum of the interior angles here. Why? Because I want to find the angle X. And I know that the angle S is equal to the angle I am finding. The question asks me to find the angle SQT. And the angle SQT alternates with the angle RSQ. So I'll find the sum of the interior angles of a triangle that is the triangle QRS. And that is an isosceles triangle over here. All right, QRS here. So I have x plus 128 plus x equals 180. And x plus s is 2x plus 128 equals 180. And 2x equals, I have 180 minus 128. So the angle 2x will be equal to, so I have 180 minus 128, and that will be equal to 52 degrees. All right. So from here, I divide 52 by 2, and I have the angle 26. All right, so that means the angle X here is 26 degrees, and here is 26. So if, if here is 26, this angle alternates with this, and this should also be 26 degrees. So therefore, angle SQT is 26 degrees all right so let's go over this first what you have to do is you know when you're sol uh, solving a circle theorem question what you have to ask yourself is what have you been given so why were we given this angle why were we also um, given the center the diameter why did we have an isosceles triangle so if I want to find this um, angle SQT first I did this I asked myself, the angle, uh, this thing, 52, is formed by which chord? That is the chord QS. Then from the same chord, I could see that from the same chord, an angle at QRS is formed. So if a chord forms two angles in opposite segments on the circumference, then, then these two angles add up to 180. So I found 128 from, and from there I could find um, 26. All right, so that is SQT gives 26. Now the next thing is that we have been asked to find the angle PQT. All right, so P here, Q, and T. So, and that is that. You see, first I talked about the fact that the angle subtended or formed by the diameter on the circumference of the circle is 90. So if the entire um, angle here, that is PQS, is 90, and SQT is uh, this thing. 26 then the angle pqt will be equal to 90 minus 26 so if i want to find the angle here that will be 90 minus 26 here 
and that gives the angle 64. So the angle here is 64 degrees, as simple as that. Okay, so just a recap of um, what I've done so far. If you are giving a question, first, if you're solving it, you have to give reasons why you are doing that. And I want us to look at it again. First, you tell the examiner that or you write down that the angle QRS plus the angle STQ equals 180 and you write the reason beside or um, below it or maybe above it. The reason is that the angle subtended or formed by the same call in opposite segment on the circumference add up to 180. So from there you can find the angle, you know, RQS or RSQ which are equal. So we designated RQS and RSQ as X. So from here, you know, we first found Y here and that is the word QRS. And from there we found the angle at S and Q, that is X. So the two angles are equal and this forms an isosceles triangle. Now, we also say that the two lines RS and QT are parallel. So we have QS that is a transversa and that makes these two angles alternate because I can draw a Z here. So I also write that angle RSQ is equal to angle SQT. Then beside it, I write that um, alternate angles are equal. All right. And the last thing is that to find angle PQT, I tell the examiner that angle PQT um, plus angle SQT equals 90. And I tell the ex examiner that it is because the angle subtended or formed by the diameter on the circumference of the circle is always 90. So you add these two angles, that is these two angles have to be complementary. Then from there, I can make angle PQT in the subject and I'll have it to be 64 degrees. Thank you. If today is your first time on this channel, please support the channel by hitting on the subscribe button so that you will not miss any video. Thank you.